Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. This morning I'm going to teach on how to read the Bible in the context. In the context. Because I was thinking that in light of what I taught last week, how we learn so much about one verse by looking at the context around it. And I just thought that's such a great key in you know, learning how to understand the Bible when you read it, that you read the word of God, the whole context to get the whole picture. And then you learn a little more about one verse that you've always liked. It's been your favorite verse. And I, I've talked to people this week. I said, yeah, I taught on you know, Hebrews 4, 12, and, and it, people almost always say, oh, that's one of my favorite verses. And I said, yeah, well, do you ever read it in its context? And that's what we did last week. In the context is such an important thing, but as a little bit of review, when you know all the words in a verse, then you can, you understand in the verse. It's written right in the verse. Now, you don't have to know every aspect of every word. You can do that later. But if you don't understand in English what each word is and in a verse, then you understand that verse. God so loved the world. None of those words are all that difficult. We've heard them. So that's how it works in the verse. Understanding each verse in its context this will give you the whole understanding of the context, what God's trying to share. And sometimes you may even have to read the entire book in which the verse is in to get a full understanding and scope of what the verse means. And to start off, I'd like to go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. And this is actually the theme uh, verse for my uh, book and class. In verse 29, and Jesus answered and said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. See, Jesus Christ is saying, the reason that you fall short, the reason that you err, make mistakes is because you don't understand the scriptures because it says you're not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And Jesus Christ was saying, you ought to know the scriptures. If you know the scriptures, then you're going to know the answers to life. Good answers. Go to Luke chapter 24. There's some more along these lines. Luke 24, and this is the day in which Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. All kinds of things were happening that day, but I want to start in verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. See, Jesus Christ was talking to these two men on the road to Emmaus. And they were concerned about the things that had happened that day in Jerusalem, how the women saw the empty tomb and stuff. And he says to them, why didn't you believe what was written? All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and in all the scripture, the things concerning himself. See, when Jesus Christ went to talk to those two people on the road to Emmaus, he says, he started in the scriptures. He taught them the scriptures. Not what someone else said about the scriptures. You know what I mean? What did the scriptures say? And then it goes on to say, and when they draw nigh to the village where they went, 
he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him. That means they asked him three times saying, abide with us for it is towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass as they sat at meat with them, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of his sight. Kind of one of the things I always get blessed about is when you see Jesus Christ in his resurrected body, that's the kind of body we're going to have. So we're going to be able to, you know, like back in the 60s, they yeah. had this show, the Star Trek, and people zoom in and out of places all the time. Well, we're going to be better than that. We won't need this uh, you transport. Know, transport. This equipment it will be part of our lives. So that's pretty neat. Verse 32 says, and they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? He opened the scriptures unto them. That's how you know about God. That's how you know about Jesus Christ. It's by the scriptures. Now, someone somewhere might tell you to share some things about the scriptures or tell you what they think about life, and they could be right or they could be wrong. You could be just as easily both ways. But when you read it line by line and verse by verse, then you know it. You know the scriptures. And look at verse 45. It says, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Not their tradition of men, now, what people said about the scriptures. And that's a big one because people talk about the scriptures all the time. They have points of view and ideas. And they may be right or they may be wrong. The only way to know if it's right or not is if you can read it line by line, verse by verse, in the context to get the whole picture of what's being said. Let's go to John, the next book, chapter 5. And we're going to start in verse 36. And here's Jesus talking to a group of people. And he says, but I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. He says, you can tell that I'm who I am because I'm doing what God sent me to do. And they knew what God sent them to do because of what? The scriptures. the scriptures. And the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. He have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape because they haven't looked at the scriptures. They just went by opinion, tradition of the elders. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. Verse 39, it says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. If you're going to know about Jesus Christ, you're going to have to go to the scriptures. You certainly can't go by what the guy on the street corner says or in the workplace or maybe even in a church. He might have his own opinion of who Jesus Christ is. I've heard it said that most clergymen don't even believe the, that Jesus Christ was the son of God. They were asked. They were asked in a survey. Verse 40 says, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. If you want to have life, you got to come to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. Now, people talk about we got to have love all the time. 
but this is talking about the love of God. And we've learned not too long ago that who uh, do we love first and foremost? God. When you do that, then things start to go in the, in the place. You know what? Where is your neighbor fall in that love category? Well, he's not first. God is first. And we got to always remember that. Our fellow man, yeah, we love them. But God first. So we always want to do the will of God in loving people. Not the other way around where, you know what I mean? Where love in your neighbor is the first thing you care. Can we just get along? You know what I mean? No, we can only get along when we love God first. Keep things in their proper perspective. And here Jesus says, you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Because why? Well, you love your neighbor. No, not first. God first, then your neighbor. And then we're willing to be third ourselves, it says in Philippians. How can ye believe? which receive honor one of another. And that's what mankind does. They honor one another. They even have reward ceremonies where they all get a reward. The best actor, the best singer, the best athlete, you know, and, and they pat each other on the back. Whenever I see a lot of that going on, I always go, who's getting the glory here? Is God getting the glory here? They, they receive, they seek not the honor that cometh from God only. See that? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. How does Moses do this? He did it by him writing the scriptures. That's how you know. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. See, that's why I was saying it's the scriptures. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall you ye believe my words? You're only going to believe Jesus' words if you believe the scriptures. The words that wrote, Moses wrote. It's pretty. Go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And what I'm really trying to do here by sharing these scriptures is try to show you, and I know you guys are all believers, but how important it is to have the scripture. What does the word say? And today, sometimes we get fooled by listening to people and we, we are more interested in what people say the word says than what the word says. That's why it's important to read the scriptures and the whole context so that we know what's going on. Acts chapter eight, verse 29. Then the spirit said unto Philip, you know, so the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. That's a believer getting manifestations and doing what God tells them to do. Go join yourself to this chariot. Get involved what's going on. You see those people over there? Go see what they have to say. And Philip walked over kind of slow. That's not what it says. He ran hither to him, and he heard him read the prophet Isaiah. That's what it means. And he said, understandest thou what thou readest. He was reading the scriptures and he says, do you understand what the scriptures said? There was a time in my life when I was interested in knowing something about God as a young man. And I got a Bible and I started reading 
what I started reading was the Gospel of John. Someone said, you ought to read the Gospel of John. So I was reading it, but I didn't really understand it. I needed someone to help me, right? I wish someone came to me at that time and said, understand is what thou readest. I would have said, well, I'm a little fuzzy. (laughs) And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? Some man who walks with God. Okay, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shears, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom spaketh this prophet? Of himself or some other man? So the eunuch had a question. What's the scripture about? So Philip could have said, listen, this is right reverend so-and-so. And he wrote this great book that will tell you what he, what he said. That's not what he did. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. He started in the scriptures and he, well, it says he began. So he started with the scriptures and he continued with the scriptures. Teaching the man what that verse was about. Just wonderful. Go to Acts chapter 17. When I first got involved in the the word, there was a man that said something like this, and you might have heard this before. He said, if you put all your other reading material away and you read nothing but the scriptures, primarily the ones written directly to you, the, the ones in the church epistle." If you do that for three months, you won't recognize yourself. That's pretty, uh, it's a wild statement when that statement was made. And uh, someone reminded me of that like 13, 14 years ago. And I'll tell you what I did. I had all this teaching stuff, teachings, pamphlets, tapes, what people were saying the word meant. And I took all that stuff and I put it aside. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to read the scriptures for three months. And and I didn't listen to anybody's teaching. I just read the word. And I'll tell you, after three months, I said, I'm going to keep this up. Because by reading the Bible, the entire context of certain things, I started to grow in the word. God helped me to understand the word as I was reading the word. You know, God's word, the Bible, is our contact point with God in our brain cells as we put the word on, as we read the word. Here in Acts chapter 17 and verse 2, it says, Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Paul just shared the scriptures with him. You know, I have been in my life before getting involved in the truth of God's word to many different fellowships and churches and things. And the only thing that ever really satisfied me is when someone made the word known to me. All the other philosophies and and teachings of good works and, you know, a social conscious and stuff never helped me to understand the word. But Paul, he taught out of the scriptures. And verse 3 says, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is the Christ. Now look at verse 11. And uh, I love this verse 11. And this is a great motto for 
any believer, every believer should be. It says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. What did they search daily? The scriptures. They didn't search what right reverend or left reverend <laughs> or, you know, what anyone else said about the word. They just search the scriptures. What does the scriptures say? I'm going to tell you something. This, that philosophy has done more for my life than anything else. Just I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm going to check the scriptures with, with the scriptures, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And my growth in God's word really helped, as I said, yeah. The scriptures, first and foremost. I'm going to search the scriptures daily. I think, and I've shared this many times, but I think the, one of the best things that any individual can do is spend time praying, asking God for help in any situation that they're in. How do, how do I handle this opportunity? How do I handle this problem? What should I do with this? in prayer and read in the scriptures and not what people say about the scriptures. What does the scriptures say? That's my advice. To you. Let's go to first Timothy chapter two. This is how the word, the scripture works with you. I'm going to show you now, but in verse one, it says, I exhort therefore that first of all, Supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All those words, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks are prayer, ways of praying. Intercept, I mean, supplication is for needs. We pray for our needs, what we need done. Prayers are prayers. Intercession is praying for other people. Given a thanks, some of our prayers should be, God, man, I'm thankful for what's going on. Thanks for being that way. And should, we should be praying for all men, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Well, that's great. In all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. We pray so that we can lead quiet and peaceable lives. But that's not the only thing we pray for. Because verse 4 tells you what God's goal is. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. I pray that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. And I also pray that we might find people that we can help to get saved, born again, have Holy Spirit, to have them defect this world's kingdom and join the kingdom of God. This has to be one of the things that we're concerned about. So when I pray for things in the morning. I pray that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life. I pray that, you know, things work out right. And I thank God that we still have the ability to speak God's word and help you. Because that's what life's all about. Thinking about that, you know what God has to know? He has to know all the languages of the world. Every one of them all the dialects, everything that someone would say because he wants to help them. So he has to know how to communicate with them. God's word works with our brain cells and God works with our brain cells to will and the do of his good pleasure. So God knows all our languages. You know what else he knows? He knows your experiences. He knows your, your work experiences, your athletic experience, your school experiences. 
your relationship you've had with others. And so when God works with you, he does that in, in correspondence to who you are because he knows. And when you read God's word and you, and you read something about some of these topics like work, study, relationships, God works within you to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's how God's word works. That's why when you read God's word and you read God's word, God's working with you. And it could be and probably is different than me because you don't have my experiences. Someone who's a tremendous fisherman, like Rose's brother, when there's something talking about fishing, he has an understanding of this. God works with that. Work experience. God's word has a lot about work. And when you read that, God can work with you according to your experience. Okay? But it's always the word. It's not our experience that are important, but God works with our understanding. Everything that we do and learn goes through a filter or of what's in our minds, our experiences, what we've done, our points of view. We, these points of view come to us because of our upbringing, our experiences. But let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Because this is the verse I was talking about. For it is God which worketh where? in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. So last week we saw that the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart and is a divider of soul and spirit. Soul being your, your you, what makes you you, and spirit means the Holy Spirit that you have. The word of God says this is who you really are, okay? But God still works within you according to who you are. And you're, that's why God can work with these people in these foreign countries, which we don't know anything about. We don't know their language, their point of view, or nothing, but God still works. How? Because God knows. Pretty neat. Verse 14 says, do all things without murmuring or disputing, that ye may be blameless, harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. You know how we shine? By manifesting Holy Spirit. By manifesting Holy Spirit, we have the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, and a few others. That's the light that they see. Shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life. We, we hold forth that word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Paul was saying, hey, you know. I've been working at this. I've been trying to teach you the word. I don't want to do it in vain. I want the word to click. But the word clicks in every individual as God works within them. Yea, yea, yea. And if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you. Rejoicing with each other. We're all partakers of the heavenly calling. It's just wonderful. So that's uh, what I think about. I think we just need to bask in the word. Read the word. Read the entire context where our favorite verses are in. I bet we learn a little bit. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, 
all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.